Hey guys, this is Eric Weingunner with Weingunner Racing. Today's video has to do with the power difference between a burr finish and an intake manifold versus a 40 grit finish done by a cartridge roll. You may have seen this throughout the internet, but I did an actual dyno test on this several years ago, and I'm gonna share the results with you with this. Um, just kind of go over with you real quick. So what this combination was, this particular one that we dyno tested with was a 406 small block Chevy 11.2 compression ratio, and at the time it had um, AFR enforcer heads, which are the old style, and they did really good, and it made pretty good power. But one of the things I wanted to test, because it had been floated on the internet forever, just like you're seeing now, is that the burr finish makes more power than having a smoother finish. And I'd heard that repeatedly, and some people claimed to have done dyno test, but the I just wanted to see for myself. I wanted to confirm if any of that had any truth to it. So, just to give you a better idea, this manifold's actually going out to a customer of mine. This would be a better example of what something looks like when it's all smoothed up. So what you have here is it's, uh, this is a trick flow R intake for an 8.2 intake manifold. But this one's um, not really, it looks smoother than what it is, but this is a 40 grit finish done with a cartridge roll. Typically, this is how I leave it, except for the floor, I will leave burr finished. So, here's what happened on the test. The first thing we did, and this, the manifold that was used for the test was an Elderbrock Super Victor uh, 2925 and tested it out of the box just like you would get. And then I took it off and I just burr finished it. I didn't port it, so I wasn't making the ports bigger at all. I simply just used a burr and put it across the entire port itself just to see how it would do. And it looked like this when it's done. And if you notice, it looks pretty rough. Now here's the thing about the burr finish is the idea goes with it that if you make the intake manifold rougher, it should atomize any fuel that's there. So like let's say fuel drops out, lands in the manifold, gets in these little rough spots, it gets re-atomized and it should make more power. I have to say this, and this is pretty important, there are some manifolds that come that are already very rough. For instance, if you got the Hulk manifold from Chris Ratko, that's probably one of the roughest manifolds I've ever seen. So if you were to do a burr finish on that, I don't even know that the texture difference itself is all that different from when it comes from the factory. But then on the other hand, you've got some manifolds that are extremely smooth. So some of the newer Elder Rocks, their finish is really, really smooth. So whether you're doing a burr finish or not, sometimes they're already kind of that way from the factory. But in saying all that, doing all that work with that burr finish, did it do anything for power? Well, here's what happened. It gained. And I'm going to show you the overlay in just a second. It gained. It gained quite a bit. So much so that I was like, wow. Because um, for years I'd just been doing the 40 grit and using the burr finish on the floor. And I was like, it gained, it gained so much. I cannot believe this. That's an amazing gain. Because this itself is not ported. So then what happened is, because I want to further test it, what I did was take that same manifold. And this time all I did was... Uh, instead of the burr finish, was use a 40 grit cartridge roll and cartridge rolls everything except for the floor of the manifold and re -dynode. And this is where things get interesting. So we have stock, burr finish, and then we have the um, 40 grit finish and each progressive step so we could see what happened. Here's what happened. Here's the overlay of the entire thing. So we have a black line, which is the stock. That's a stock Edelbrock 2925. Then we have the blue line, which is the burr finish. And as you can tell, when I just did just the burr finish, it gained so much more than the stock. It gained quite a bit. And it looked like a win-win. Then I 40 gritted it. And that's where things get different. The 40 grit, grit beat the burr finish. So the smoother manifold actually made more power and torque. And the only time it didn't was actually in the lower RPM. And I wouldn't say it was really that low, but from looks like 49 all the way to 4,500 RPM, the burr finish was just slightly more, like one or two foot pounds of torque. For the rest of that, the 40 grit, so the smoother finish, made more power. 
this was a very, very interesting test. And both of those gained over the stock intake manifold. So it, regardless of what you say, it's a great, great benefit. Now here's the thing, and I'm going to say this. If you're worried about the surface finish of your manifold, whether it be this nice 40 grit um, or a burr finish, you are wasting your time because I have another graph. That gains or whatever, that's, that's some good gains, whatever you could say about it, but you're wasting your time on surface finish. There are far more important things that make more power because look at this. Focus more on the getting the better manifold. So here, the only thing that's changed now is the black line is the Victor Junior manifold. The red line is the 40 grit uh, finish. The blue line is the burr finish. And this is on an Edelbrock Super Victor. If you notice, the Victor Junior beats both of them, no matter what the finish is. Point being is, if you just focus on the surface finish and not actually on the design of the manifold, you leave so much more behind. The better manifold will make more power and torque, whether you burr finish the other one or not. So keep that in mind. The more important things than the surface finish. But in my testing, the 40 grit was better. I will give one caveat. Each time that this was done, so we go back and look at this, I didn't try to make the port bigger at all, just changing the surface finish of the port. But inevitably, it did grow a little bit. So it grew a little bit when it was burr, and it grew a little bit more when it's 40 grit. What I should have done is another test further after that, just to burr grit that finish again to see if it kept climbing. Because what might be happening is it had nothing to do with surface finish at all, and it was only because the port slightly grew each time. Although the growth is very, very, very small. So again, all I'm doing is touching the surface finish. But the bigger thing to focus on is getting the right manifold. That gains you more than the surface finish. Anyway, there you go. Remember, this is not a 100% applies to everything. None of my tests are. But the one test I have done so far on this, the 40 grit finish beats the burr. Guys, remember, I am no Superman. I did raise Superboy. I do not port cast iron heads. I do not respond to either Facebook or Instagram messages. The best way to get a hold of me is through email at winegarnerracing at gmail.com. You guys take care.